Um, so if you have your Bible, uh, turn to Joshua chapter 4. So today's, this is, a, this is an exciting day. We got a lot of fun stuff planned for you today. Um, and a chance for us to celebrate um, what God is doing in kids' ministry and student ministry and all throughout our church. And so we're going to, um, you're going to ha- kind of have to be ready because we're going to be going quick here um, today. So kids, if you remember uh, the story in the Bible where the Israelites, um, they, they were in captivity in Egypt. Parents, I hope you remember it as well. Um, they're in captivity in Egypt and, and Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, uh, let my people go. And so Pharaoh says no. And then the Lord sends the 12 plagues and they go through the, the frogs and the locusts and all of those things until finally Pharaoh says enough. And he says, you're free to go. So he sends them on their way and they get to the Red Sea and Moses parts the Red Sea and they walk across on dry land. And then from there, it should have taken them a few days to, to get to the land that was promised to them. Maybe, you know, worst case scenario, a week with stops for bathroom breaks and to get food and gas and all that stuff. But it should have taken them just a few days. And instead, they wander around in the desert, in the wilderness, for 40 years. Now, I've been on a lot of road trips, especially with my family. And I would tell you, if it's supposed to take me a few hours to get somewhere and it takes me a few years we got some major, major issues um, with our GPS. And so, so here they are, they're wandering through the desert and they're wandering through the wilderness and obstacle after obstacle after trial after one thing after another. They get incredibly thirsty. There's no water for us. And so God has Moses strike the rock and water comes pouring out of the rock. Can you believe that? How crazy is that? Then they get really, really hungry and there's no food. And what are we going to do for food? And so what does God do? He lets food rain down from heaven. Like every day they had food that rained down from heaven. He provided for them. And so I just um, one thing after another, God showed that he was able to provide for his people. And so now we find ourselves here at this moment. We're about 40 years later. And so Joshua has on the people and they're at the banks of the Jordan River and, and they got a crossover and over there is the promised land. And so it's, it's funny because especially when I was a kid, every time I, every time I thought of, of the promised land, um, I would, I would kind of think, and they lived happily ever after, you know, like it's all, it's all good from that point on. And, and, and it wasn't, they had hardships once they entered that land. And in fact, Joshua had gone into the land and, and came back out and said, Hey, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's, it's incredible. But some other guys went into the land and came back out and said, no, there's, there's giants there. They're going to destroy us. And so both of those things were, were kind of true. Like it was a wonderful land for them, but it was also, they had a lot of things, a lot of obstacles to overcome. And so what I want us to do today is I want us to grab Joshua chapter four here. And, and I just want to read one verse because as they, as they get ready to cross into the land, um, uh, it, through the Jordan, something really cool happens. So if you turn uh, to the, to the end of the chapter, verse Verse 19, let's, let's, I'm read there because here's what Joshua does. He says to him, look, here's what's going to happen. Tomorrow we're going to cross over the Jordan. And as soon as the Ark of the Covenant, that's the symbol that, that we hold for the Lord here. As soon as it hits the water, the water's going to part and we're going to walk across on dry land. And the Ark's going to stay right there in the middle of the river. And so what I want you guys to do, I want you to pick one person from each tribe, 12 tribes. I want you to as you're going through that one person, pick up a stone and bring it with you. And then, and then we're going to make a memorial and we're going to remember all the stuff that God's done. Now, we still have a lot of work ahead of us, but, but we're going to make a memorial here. So verse 19, the people came out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did at the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. And so all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And so I think that's a a really neat, neat, story for us to think about today. 
Because if, if, if we pause for just a minute and think about all of the things that God has done for us, you know, the last several years have been pretty unique. Like it was just a, just a, a couple years ago that we weren't even meeting in here. We were all online. And we weren't even in this room together. And then we were, you know, we had the chains on the pews because we had to sit every other seat and, and we had to wear masks and we had to, I mean, it's just one obstacle after another. And look at God's faithfulness. And, and, and some hard times happened through there. And God was faithful. Even over the last year here in our church, we've gone through some trials here. Um, but God has been so faithful to us. He's been so good to us. And I imagine if I went around the room and asked every single one of you to share your story with me, you would, you would tell me of how, how, how God has been faithful in your life and how you've experienced some, some trials. And there may even be some of you that you're in the midst of a trial right now. Like you're in your own wilderness and you're wandering and trying and God is still providing for you on a daily basis. There, there might even be some of you here today that you would say, I'm, I'm like the people in Egypt where... I feel enslaved to something. Something's got a hold over me, and I'm enslaved to that. And, and so, and, and, and God, is, God is reaching out to you for rescue. And so I want us to remember where we came from today. Like, remember, remember that. Remember where God has brought you from. And, and remember the Lord in the midst of that. Remember his provision. Remember the things that he's, he's done. I can think of two or three things just off the top of my head where if I look back and, and, and told you that story, I couldn't do anything but give God 100% of, of the credit, 100%, because it was just something that was uh, almost miraculous that God did in our life. And so I think many of you could do the same thing, and, and we give God credit for that. We say, God, you're the one that's so faithful. And then I think it's really important for us to, to, to remember our kids that are in this room. Like, we need to tell them those stories. You need, to, you need to have a conversation with your kids, even maybe even on the way home today, about the, the things that God has done. Here's why we celebrate. I think it's important for them to see us worshiping together. I think it's important for them to, 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 open, to see you opening God's word. I think that's really important. I think it's important for you to share your testimony with them of, of, of how I was lost and, and God saved me. I think that's really important because the next generation needs to, needs to hear. And so what I want to do here for just, just a couple minutes, and then we're going to spend the rest of the service celebrating some of the things that God has done. I want to build a little, a little memorial. I, 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 I went outside and got these really heavy stones. Um, and, and, and so uh, I want to build a little memorial here. I grabbed 12, 12 stones, um, and, and these, are, these are important to me. These are things that I think... That, that I, where I see God's hand. And so the first thing that I, I wrote down was fellowship. And, and I don't take it for granted that we get to worship together here. I, I don't take it for granted that, that I, you, you are my family, you are my friends, that, that we go through hardships together, that we go through stuff together, that God allows the body of Christ here to care for one another. I don't, I don't, I don't take that for granted at all. I, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for for um, kids ministry. I mean, you saw here just a minute ago the you know the kids and just doing some really cool. Uh, it's just awesome. I, 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 if you were um, the slides that were up, those are graduating seniors um, that are heading off, and my daughter is I'm one of those. And so I I can't help but think she is who she is today because of so many of you in the kids ministry and student ministry. Like I'm I'm grateful for the work. It's being poured into our kids' lives. I think it's so important. It's so good. Um, if, you, if you walked in the building uh, and didn't notice, uh, we, we had a prom here um, Friday night, and we had a great time. It was so much fun. Um, uh, hundreds of people in the building and, and, and those with special needs just laughing and smiling and, and having a, an incredible time. And I love that God gives us the opportunity to reach out and care and, and bring joy and excitement to um, people's lives. I'm grateful for that. Um, we're going to get to experience baptisms here in just a minute. And, and I love baptisms because um, it, is, it is our body saying so, Someone saying, I identify with Christ. That's, that's, it's a public declaration of their faith. 
And it's, it's the stories that we get to share of how God has worked in their heart and worked in their life. And it's so encouraging and it's so much fun to... I said students earlier and I meant it. I'm a longtime youth pastor and, and so I'm, I'm so grateful for what our student ministry does here. Um, for the camps that they got to be a part of this summer, uh, for the, all you guys over there, like I saw you um, moving and grooving and I love it. I think that's awesome. Um, I, I, we, it's good that you're here with us. It's good that you're in this room with us. I, I love, we need your enthusiasm and excitement in our body and I hope we encourage you back. And so I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely grateful for you. Uh, thankful for who you are. Um, you're gonna hear in just a minute a little bit about Mexico. That's one of the stories that I said where, where we give, give God 100% of the credit. Man, I got a couple stories from Mexico that can't be explained any other way. It's just God at work doing phenomenal things. And, and you can't, I can't take any, man can't take any credit. It is God at work. I love hearing what's happening there. I love that we get to be in this room together and worship. I mean, I love the, the you know, just, uh, I love the talent that's up here, but man, it's, it's really cool sometimes to be down, down front where I am and to hear your voices. Like, I love it. It's just, it is, it is, it is worship to our father and it's an incredible thing. I'm going to get to blow your mind here um, in a few minutes or Adam will with, with uh, some stats from Camp Carl, another incredible summer out there where God was, God was working in the hearts of hearts of kids and, and um, so many of you volunteered out there and, and, and you cared for kids out there and you loved them and, and I mean it's, it's a long summer for them but man it is phenomenal and then and then backpacks I mean we got to do this and we'll share the share the numbers with you here in just a minute um, we packed up hundreds of backpacks to give to those who are in need here and and your kindness your generosity it's 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 beautiful what, the, the way that we get to look at our community and go, hey, we love you, we care about you. And then I got one here that's blank. And then I got another one here that's blank. And then I've got a third one here that's blank. And I left them blank on, on purpose because um, I, I want you to write on them. Like I would write my family on one. I'm so grateful for my family. I would write my wife, I would write my kids. I would write you, my friends. I'm so grateful for all, all of that. God has blessed me and cares for me. I would, I would write my job. I love working here. I, I can't believe I get paid to do what I do here. Like, I'm so thankful for that. Like, I, 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 I love being a part of that. I could, I could write, stack a memorial, my, my mom and dad and my brother, and, and just, uh, just look in the way God has blessed me and cares for me. And, and, and it's not that I'm not without trials in my life and my life is perfect. Nah, man, I'm a knucklehead just like everybody else. But, but I, would, I would offer to you, I pause and I think about God's goodness in my life. And I think about how good he is. What would you write on those? Like, what would you write down on your memorial to say, man, this is where God has been good for me. I mean, it's where God has cared for me and, and provided for me. This is, the, this is the struggle that I'm going through right now. Maybe it's medical. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe, maybe there's something. Man, watch for God's hand. Watch for his provision in it. And let's celebrate that together. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much just for your goodness to me in my life. Thank you for, for uh, uh, Joshua giving us that example of, of pausing and, and building a memorial and, and just remembering what, what you've done and your goodness in our heart and in our life. So God, we celebrate you and we celebrate what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. And God, we celebrate over the next few minutes here. We just, we just want to thank you for the stories that we're going to share of how you are at work in our hearts and in our lives and in our church and in our families. So God, we love you and we thank you in your son's name. This has been a message from the chapel. Thanks for joining us today. For more information about the chapel or any of our campuses, including Akron, Green, Wadsworth, Kenmore, Cuyahoga Falls, Nordonia, and Medina, please go to our website at thechapel.life.